Hi, I'm Brian McLaren. For the last few days I've been in Claremont, California. We've had over 1,500 philosophers, theologians, ec economists, scientists, uh, and activists get getting together to talk about the possibilities of uh, seizing an alternative, turning from a fossil fuel, uh, carbon intensive economy that's destroying so many things and, and is leading us toward a precipice. Uh, seizing an alternative of an ecological civilization. It's been especially encouraging to have a lot of folks here from China and uh, all over the world uh, gathering with Americans and uh, just a, a really rich conversation. People keep finding themselves in rooms where uh, questions are being asked that need to be asked, plans are being hatched that needs to that need to be hatched, and I think people are just inspiring one another to say, this isn't easy. The, the, the change we've got to go through in our culture isn't easy. Uh, I liked what Bill McKibben said the other night. We can't guarantee that we'll win, but we can guarantee that we'll fight. And I think people have drawn strength from one another to keep the fight going. That struggle has happened in so many different areas. There are theological dimensions that have to be addressed that I'm especially interested in. Uh, to, to change the framework that people are working and there are theological ideas that keep people locked up in the old economy. Uh, sadly, we wish that religion, especially the Christian gospel, were truly a message of good news and liberation, but so often the message has been twisted to become a kind of pacification and co-opting and uh, domestication so that people just become, you know, uh, religious drones within an existing system that's terribly destructive. Uh, similar conversations are going on uh, among economists and philosophers and, uh, and business leaders and, and scientists. Uh, it's been a hopeful week and uh, we've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Let me ask you something. David Corton, who's also at this conference and to whom your writings have introduced me, has written a book, Change the Story, Change the Future a theme with it you have written about frequently as well. Can you say something yeah, about that? Sure. Uh, seven or eight years ago, I was writing a book called Everything Must Change, where I wanted to bring the core message of Jesus, this message of the kingdom or reign or new economy or new way of life uh, of God uh, to bear on contemporary global issues. And one of the really important books in my research at that point was David Corton's book, the Great Turning, and, uh, and David's subsequent books, he's continued to pick up a theme that he addressed in The Great Turning. Uh, there, David said, if you want to change the world, you have to change people's stories. He talked about how the status quo has been created and is being upheld by a series of stories. And uh, these stories function on a very deep level. They, they, they don't just affect what we think, they, they affect how we think and what's even possible for us to imagine. Uh, and of course, this is what I think the faith community is uh, is really called to do. We're called to tell healing stories, stories that help us get unstuck when we're stuck, set free when we need to be set free, and uh, that lead us in paths of wisdom and reconciliation and love and hope. Uh, so I think David Corton is exactly right. If we want to change the world, we have to change the story. Uh, and uh, sadly, too often, religious communities are the last people to realize that the story they're telling may not be the original story they were supposed to tell uh, and the story that's needed today. Uh, but also interestingly, deep in my tradition as a Christian is this word repentance. Repentance means rethinking. And rethinking means being open to a new story to frame your life by. Uh, that's. Uh, that's an essential part of the work that we have to do, whether we're talking about moving toward an ecological civilization as opposed to a, a d destructive and suicidal civilization, or whether we're talking about making change in our personal lives. We, change comes from changing our stories. There's all these denominations and, and particular brands of evangelicalism that sort of coalesce around a particular nar biblical narrative. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, there, there might be end times type churches. Yes. What would it be like if there was a eco church? Uh, churches advertise yes. themselves as Bible churches. Right? Yes, <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Want me to make a comment on sure. that? Sure. Uh, I often say that the form of Christianity I grew up with was an evacuation plan. 
Earth was hopeless. Yeah. It was going to be destroyed. God wanted to suck our souls out, get them up to heaven, leave all this mess behind and go up to heaven with God. It was kind of a vacation and evacuation plan. Uh, I've become convinced that Jesus' real message was the very opposite. It was a transformation plan, an incarnation plan. The whole movement, I think, of the gospel is a movement downward. Uh, and e even the book of Revelation ends with the new Jerusalem, the city of God coming down so that God's dwelling places with humanity. The whole direction of the Bible is not us going up to be with God. It's God coming down to be with us. So the kind of Christianity that I think we need as we move forward, we might call an eco-Christianity. It's about God's solidarity and presence with humanity, with the earth, with God's creation. I mean, the, the whole Bible starts with God creating the world, God pronouncing it good, which means valuable. And one of our great tragedies of the last several centuries is we've lost the deep concept of the inherent goodness of the world, of all created, uh, all created life and you know, every atom and molecule and all that. It's precious, it's sacred, it's got God's fingerprints on it. What would happen if our churches reoriented, not around an evacuation plan, but around a transformation plan? That's maybe a good way to define what I feel my, my mission and calling is about. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you.